Hello, it's Tom here. Welcome back to Paintings I Like, art criticism you can chew on. I just wanted to do a short video looking at 10 pieces that I enjoyed at this year's Summer Exhibition. The Summer Exhibition, by the way, is an incredible annual event, this year helmed in part by the wonderful Grayson Perry, there he is, where everyone can enter whatever they want, and if it's deemed good enough, it's hung on the walls of the Royal Academy for all to see. Over 1,300 pieces were displayed as part of the 2018 Summer Exhibition, so today is a very minute selection, about 0.7% to be somewhat precise, so if you enjoy what you see here, head off to the Royal Academy before the 19th of August and dive in. A quick note, I should say, this list is in no way in an order, because that would be very silly. This is just 10 pieces that I enjoyed, a few notes here and there, so um, yeah, let's get started, shall we? Number one, Emmeline by Francesca Colusi. What a medley. What a brilliant juxtaposition of forms here, the emblazoned hand embroidery and anonymous vintage postcard colliding so elegantly. When the initial sweet shock of the work fades, the exquisite attention to detail is what continues to hold attention, each fabric panel being made of a multitude of singular squares that reveal a hallucinatory negative world up against the charming portrait. The hair realised in a multitude of shades, with the gap between the curtain and the curtain itself reimagined separately, the luminescent bosom, the pale wrist against the ocean blue of the dress. The stylish construction of the piece really throws it out of time. There are so many things tucked away beneath bigger works in the summer exhibition, and this is one of my favourites. Number two, Brand Wars by Chris McRae. There is almost a sense of the Duchamp ready-made about this. What we are seeing has always been part of the Burger King logo, and what's brilliant is that the artists notice this. Of course, the message of the piece is pretty implicit and obvious, still very cute though. And I dig the wash of colours too, held up to viewers' scrutiny. But it's the why didn't I think of thatness of this that I truly love. And now, if you don't mind, I'm off to get a big whopper. Number three, View of Islington from a Tenth Floor by Melissa Scott Miller. This terrific, wide sprawl of an image was probably the most popular in terms of audience when I was at the exhibition, and it's easy to see why. Not just an exercise in visual empiricism where people can recognise the landscape and its minutiae as their own, but in the astounding details, with every garage roof and windowsill realised with an endearing accuracy. Though perhaps slightly cartoonish at an initial glance, the charming style is of true vision and skill. Not only does the sun fall across the image with great exactitude, with the rays falling lazily across the various outcrops, but the whole thing has a biting, affirming Britishness to it. The urban sprawl is breathtaking, but it's the trees and branches that I really love. They have a wispy, ethereal feel that is conceived with such assurance, but such delicacy. Number four, Untitled by Bill Woodrow. There's a simplicity to this that I just love. The red wash horizon and the teal beneath forming a flag-like background onto which leafless trees stand as plimps for deformed skulls. There's a charm to the scrawly way in which it was conceived. Is this a comment on trees like this being skeletons of past glories, a rumination on the cycle of morality? Or is it just a nice bit of art? I'll let you decide. Number five, Singer in the Square by Bill Jacklin. The endless blurred momentum of life is evoked fantastically here. We are told of the singer in the square, but the eye catches the lone man. Most seem to be dancing or walking or talking, but he is stationary, solid. Gaining features, drained sockets, a subtle slip of a tie, whilst all around the mass is androgynous, symbiotic, slightly indistinct as if behind frosted glass. The man then is the perfect conduit for the viewer in the summer exhibition as a whole. Someone trying to gain a foothold in a bustling environment. Number six, Innocence by Simone Riley. There's something so charming about this, despite it feeling like one of those end of the pier type things you might see above a carvery urinal. Stop it away, the child appears almost regal in its layers of abstraction. Let's file this under, I don't know why I like this. But I really do. Number seven, Red Bear by Debbie Lawson. How could I not pick this? Anyone who's been to the exhibition will no doubt tell you about Red Bear, which is a, a red bear, well, a carpeted bear, towering and snarling in all its ursine glory. I love the way that the rug and roar combine the patterning forming a pupil for the bear and its ankles frilled by tassels. This is scary altogether, but delightfully domineering. Number eight, Longestine 
by Dame Elizabeth Blackadder. I've got nothing to say really about any deeper meaning of this image, and why should I have to? The technique and detailing is just marvellous. Cut away from the culinary, there is almost a scientific relish in the realisation of the fish hermetically harboured away from any backdrop. The bruised pinks with the soft greys and blackened tips all melding majestically to evoke something familiar yet stirring. Number 9. Quintessence of Dust by Vita Gorner. I'm crazy about this one. The stages of man given the illusion of motion through refraction via glass. A glass that is empty, I should add. There is just so much going on here, so much to explore, the variety of poses that interject through the reflections, the cylindrical shadow laying supine as binoculars. It does what a lot of great art does, makes us ponder death. Number 10. I forgot to take a photo of its number, so I don't know the name of the painting or the artist. Sorry. Fantastic, ingenious perspective here. How many paintings of horses are there? And how many from a top one? Maybe a few, but certainly not one that I've seen. There comes a sense of monotony of travel. The landscape barren and the company few. And as you may be able to tell from my slightly suspect angles, this was up high and hard to reach. And that's one of the great things about the summer exhibition. You never know where the next thing you love might be hiding. And there you have it. There's 10 that I enjoyed. I could have done another 10, another 20 more. I think this year in particular was a fantastic showing for the summer exhibition. Definitely check out my old art blog, Queezer. I don't really post on there anymore, but I did an article on the 2015 exhibition if you're interested. And uh, subscribe to this channel as well. Plenty more videos coming in the future. Uh, yeah, go to summer exhibition if you get a chance. It's absolutely amazing. This has been Tom. Paintings I like. Art criticism you can chew on. See you later.